We are sitting down with Africa Director of Gates Foundation, Dr. Paulan Basinga. We're going to ask him about what Gates Foundation is doing on this continent, their missions and goals. And also we'll throw in some personal and fun questions to get to know him better. So let's go. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Sia and today I'm honored to be joined by Dr. Paulan Masinga, Africa Director of Gates Foundation. I'm particularly excited about this interview because we share the same mission and passion for improving lives and public health. This conversation is going to be fun, inspirational, motivational, and of course, we're going to talk about the amazing work that Gates Foundation is doing in this continent. Dr. Masinga, welcome to the beautiful South Africa. How has your trip been so far and what's been the best part? Thank you very much for having me, Dr. Sia. I've been watching you, your TikTok, you're famous. So it's a privilege for me to be here today. I'm um, loving it. It seems like everything was just planned for us to be here this week. Cape Town weather is amazing this week. Yes. Perfect. Beautiful mountains, uh, great people. Uh, it was uh, fascinating to be here. You've just visited some sites and initiatives and projects on the ground. Which ones stood out most to you? We spent uh, three days here. I'm going to be in Johannesburg for the next two days. But um, yeah, we've done a lot. We visited the primary school. You know, we do, um, we support work on health, education, you know, sanitation, many, many programs. So this time we went to visit a primary school where I spent time hanging out with grade one and grade two kids, seeing how they learn math, how they learn reading in, in Kosa. I need yes. to pronounce it well. So uh, we're working with uh, some really great local organizations here that are supporting, you know, the school systems here, how to adapt, uh, you know, to support teachers in the classroom, how to really teach them and support them, how they transmit knowledge to the young learners it was fascinating. And then we went to visit um, a TB a clinical trial site, actually, you know, South Africa is known because if you list universities across Africa, the first five, six are from South Africa. So the quality of medical research here is top notch. It's like, you know, global research that, that are here. So uh, the Gates Foundation has been supporting some work to try to find a new vaccine for tuberculosis. You know, as you know, South Africa account for 1% of the world population, but 18% of HIV cases are in South Africa, and 6% of all TB prevalence are in South Africa. It's quite huge. So it makes sense for us and the global community to actually test the new vaccine, because there's been more than 100 years that we didn't get new vaccine for tuberculosis. So there is two candidates that are getting ready, probably by 2027, and South Africans, researchers are actually testing those vaccines. So I want to see how they're doing it, the process they are going through, etc. It's just fascinating to see. It's going to be groundbreaking if the vaccine gets approved. Yeah. Personal question. Do you do any sports or arts? Uh, yes, um, I play soccer. So I used to play theatre when I was younger, but I continue to follow art uh, quite a lot. OK, just uh, for the audience, favourite football team? Oh, you know, I, I, I don't know. It yeah. depends on the which leagues, etc. Okay. But I copy my son, who's 12 years and who followed the, uh, you know, uh, uh, England, the, the Premier League. In, in okay. you know, the only thing I know is that Arsenal is number two now, so I do support Arsenal. But uh, I love seeing Liverpool and all the others play. So I love just seeing the beautiful soccer um, game. Okay. game how it plays. That's yeah. amazing. So, Dr. Basinga, you are a medical doctor. You have masters and a PhD in international development. You've been working with the Gates Foundation for over a decade. Please tell us a little bit about, about your journey and what inspired you to join the foundation. Thank you very much. So, you know, I'm from Rwanda. So I uh, did my medical school in Rwanda uh, in 1995, just after the genocide. Uh, the government did an amazing job to actually make sure that the university was able to open very early on. And I lived in exile at that time, you know, before that. I lived in DRC, uh, came back to Rwanda in 1995, did my medical school, finished in 2001, 2002. And that was really the beginning of the phase of global health, 
uh, that you see today, right? With the beginning, you know, the creation of Gavi, the creation of the Global Fund. And at that time, we really started working to restructure and rebuild the Rwanda health system. And so as part of the, uh, you know, colleagues who were working with the government of Rwanda at that time, wanted to be a pediatrician. I worked in the pediatric department for a year. Uh, but at that time, an opportunity opens up to do a master's and PhD in public health at Tulane University, which I jumped into that opportunity and then uh, worked uh, for the School of Public Health in Rwanda and I did a sandwich program. So I'll go to the state for six months, take classes and then come back to Rwanda to actually teach students, support the Ministry of Health doing research. I did a lot of consultancy in the regions, etc. At that time we were uh, very privileged to be bilingual. So I spoke both French and English, so I can support, I could support at that time, you know, French speaking countries and, you know, Anglophone speaking countries. And it was just a golden age of global health from 2004, five, six, you know, up to 2013. Uh, then I uh, was working on HIV at that time and uh, an opportunity opens up at the Gate Foundation when the Gate Foundation uh, was uh, thinking about how to expand and bring more people with um, global health research and African experience, etc., then I joined the Gate Foundation uh, at that time. Amazing. As we know, the Gate Foundation has been uh, working in Africa for over two decades. What are some of the biggest success stories in the continent? Yeah, so the Gate Foundation is celebrating 25 years this year, right? Wow. And I'm so privileged to have been with the Gate Foundation half of that time. So 13 years with the Gate Foundation. And um, when I joined the Gate Foundation in 2012, they've had already built some really global health partnerships, right? And the plan at that time was to say, you know, let's build global health partnership, you know, Gavi and Global Fund and other platforms that will create global public good. And then the world will take those innovation up, right? And then, you know, around 2012, 2013, the Gate Foundation really expanded its presence on the continent to say, let now open offices in the continent, let place staff on the continent, let engage more with government so that we can accelerate the introduction, innovation, ad, you know, adoption by countries. And I would say a few of the areas that we can, we've really made huge impact. Uh, the top one is polio eradication. For example, Bill Gates uh, really uh, took that on as a top priority for the foundation to work with the, uh, you know, global polio eradication uh, platform, mm. which includes, you know, the donors like the U.S. government, like WHO, UNICEF and others. They all came together and really worked to really drive the case of polio down significantly. So we've reduced the case of polio in Africa to close to zero. You know, while polio viruses is, think of the past, Yes, True. we still have challenges with the derived polioviruses, you know, in some places, you know, uh, northern Nigeria or DRC or other countries, but uh, partners are working very hard to try to decrease that. There continue to be some cases of wild polio in Afghanistan and Pakistan, and we are that close, as the polio team will tell you, very, very close on radical polio, that one. And then the second one is really expanding routine immunization systems across Africa. We've been able you know, to support many countries, working with many of our partners like UNICEF, you know, and other partners to really increase the coverage of routine immunization because we know that uh, the world used to lose many kids because of vaccine preventable diseases, right? And the fact that we have vaccines that are available being able to provide those vaccines for our kids so that we can continue to decrease maternal you know, under five mortalities is critical. So since 1990 up to today, under five mortality has been halted by 50%, which is one of the you know, biggest um, achievements. And then the third area is maternal health. You know, maternal health also, we continue to lose our moms. As you know, a mother in Africa, it's the pillar of the family. Like imagine a mom who is pregnant and then go through, we know that 85% of pregnancies will just go without any problem. But there is a probability that 15% of those, are like one to 2% of that 15% will need special care. So like losing moms because of, you know, uh, you know, hemorrhage, et cetera, it's been critical. So we've been working very hard with our partners to try to find ways to decrease maternal mortality. So these are the kind of things that we're doing. And then 
top of that is just like strengthening health system to be able to be managed very well, working with community health workers, you know, to identify cases from the community, refer them to the health post, the health facilities, et cetera. So that the kind of thing that we've been doing. And then the wraparound data for accountability to really make sure that the government has the appropriate data to manage That's amazing, programs. all the support that Gates Foundation giving to all the governments and communities. Africa is constantly evolving and so many people are shaping its future. If you could describe Africa's future in three words. Oh, wow, I would say the future is bright, promising, and full of colors. You know, I, you know, despite everything that is happening in the world, I think the future of Africa is, is brighter. Uh, I think in global health in general, uh, as I mentioned before, we are entering a new era of global health and global development, which will be shaped by, uh, uh, you know, how Africa will actually react on what is happening globally. And then Africa will actually provide the way for the future of global health. Would you include a piano in one of these three words? You know, to be, to be honest and to be fair to the all Africa, I will not take a piano alone. I will say a piano and Afrobeat, right? Nice. Because those are the two biggest trend dance that are dancing the world, right? So because when you take the combination of, um, you know, um, uh, Afrobeat in Nigeria, I'm a piano in South Africa, I'm from East Africa, we have very good beats as well, you know, in between Tanzania, Kenya and Rwanda, you know, in DRC, etc. So good music, I think, you know, uh, Africa is making the world dance today. So I think now if you look at the future of global health, we need that, you know, creativity, that uh, localization, that way of creating the future of our global health. We need to define it from Africa because uh, for quite a long time, it was defined for us from the global north. Now it's really time to actually think about how we generate a new way of taking care of our people from here. True. Last question for our South African audience. No pressure on this one, but what's your favorite thing about South Africa? And trust me, we're not going to judge. I think what I really love about South Africa is to truly experience what you here call the rainbow country. It's so diverse. It is. You know, to your point, as you're saying, when you are in South Africa, it's like you are going to an international conference. Exactly. You know, you have, you know, different, you know, you know, cultures, cultures religions, and races, religions yeah. and you know, you know, tribes and and languages, etc. Just all living in this beautiful place. It's just amazing to see and to experience. It is an amazing feeling. And for the audience who are listening and they want to take action to make an impact and change in Africa, what you would advise them? You know, I would say this is the time to actually take care of our health systems and our, our people. You know, it, uh, it's really time to realize that um, the uh, African solution for Africa problem is not to wait, it's now. It needs to really, really happen now, yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Basinga, for your time and really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your thoughts down in the comments and make sure to follow.